React Native Developers, this fun graph user interaction implemented with React Native Skia is a perfect opportunity to brush up on the fundamentals of paths and basic curves. I'm William, recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland, and this video is all about building great graph user interactions. More specifically, I would like to show you four things. This is the user interaction we're going to build together. And the first thing is going to be to go from data points, lines, to nice cubic Bezier curves to smooth the edges. And then we're going to look at getting the Y position onto the graph, so to move the cursor along. We take the X coordinate of our finger and we nicely calculate the Y position onto the graph. And then we can go from this Y position back to a value. So we, we, you see here when I move the cursor around, you get the dollar amount on top. And finally, we can interpolate nicely from one graph to the other. Using React Native Skia, this is extremely fast. We do it in C++. A graph is a series of data points. We usually need to scale a date to X position and a value to a Y position. A library like D3 can help you with providing the necessary helpers to scale values and also to go in the other direction from X and Y coordinates back to values. Now let's draw a line between those points. We would like to smooth the edges to look much nicer. Again, D3 can help you with that. There are some really nice algorithms available to go from a line to a nice cubic Bezier curve. Finally, we need to move the cursor around. We get the X position of our finger and we need to get the Y position onto the graph. Finally, we can interpolate from one path to the other. If the path has the same number of points, we simply do a linear interpolation of the path values. In React Native Skia, these are done natively in C++, so it's extremely fast. And there are some JavaScript libraries which can help you to transform paths so they can be interpolated with each other in case they are inter heterogeneous. Guys, I am so excited to finally dive in into this topic with you. Let's build that delightful graph user interaction. We are into VS Code here. We know we want to do four things, and the first one is going to be to have, so to go from these data points with lines to nice, smooth, cubic Bezier curves. And so here we have our graph data. So I have the build graph function. Here it's some simple linear scaling. I just did it manually, but of course I probably recommend you use D3. And here we have the lines function, which simply traces a line between data points. But then we have a curve line function, which transforms the lines to cubic basic curves. If we use the simple strategy, it's a quadratic curve, but we can use a cubic Bezier here or using the complex strategy. Again, you can find these functions from D3. So I'm going to use it's called curve lines. And so the smoothing value, I don't know, I'm going to put a random value and the strategy, I'm going to select complex. So you see, <laughs> this is a bit too much, right? So if I put zero one, zero one is good. Maybe let's see zero two. I guess zero two is nice. Zero three is too much. Yeah. So I guess zero two is, is good. So that was, easy. Now we have a sequence of cubic Bezier curves and we need to find the Y position of the cursor when moving it around. So we have our React Native Skia here, Scanva here, and we're going to add a touch handler so we can move the cursor around. So on touch. And usually what we do is we do on touch equals use touch handler. So here I can see that uh, Copilot is ahead of me. But since we're going to need some Skia values, which are private to the touch handler, so to keep the dependency clean and to keep the implementation clean, we're going to wrap it into a hook called use graph touch handler. And this touch handler is going to write the X value. So we're going to create X value and we're going to pass it as parameter. So 
this function is empty. So we know we need to return a use touch handler. And we know that the touch handler has three events we're interested in. So on start, on active, on end. And let's start super simple. So here on active, we get the x, y value. We do y x dot current equals the pointer dot x. And so we assume the value should be written nicely to the value, but to visualize it, we're going to pass the x value to the cursor. So we're going to have x, which is um, skia, let's say read only value. And we're going to do a transform, which is a, we were going to derive a transform. So a transform is an array of transformations. The dependency here is the x value. So we're going to do translate x equals x dot current. And we can assign it to the group. Let's have a look here. I can move the cursor along the x axis nicely. Now we need to find the y position. And so if I go here, we're going to derive the y position based on the x position. So use derived value, the dependency is x value. And we have a function which is called get y for x. We can pass the path, the x value, so x dot current. Let me show you how this get y for x function works. So we get the path, we can convert it into a list of commands. So we know the list of cubic basic curves. And since we know the paths are non-overlapping and all going in the same direction, for x value, we know easily to which uh, cubic basic curve we, we are targeting. And once we have the exact cubic basic curve, we can do a solve. And uh, so we have this solve a cubic equation here. And finally, that gives us the t value for that x position. And then we can just simply feed it into a cubic Bezier function. I will link to a interesting article on, there's many resources on how to, to achieve this. I will link to it in the video description. But now let's have a look. So you see, we can move the cursor along nicely. So we have the y value here. And so what we would like to do now is to also interpolate the color. So we can do color use the right value based on the x position. So x dot current, the input range uh, we go from oh, zero to weave, but we need to divide by the number of colors. So here we have the colors, right? These. And so the input range is going to be, so for each colors, we're going to do a map. And we're going to do, so it's, uh, it would be I divided by color length minus one, right? So at zero, it's zero. And at, so if the length is four, we have I is going to be three, right? So it's zero, one, two, three for four values. So we want to be, to be at one. So we want the here to be at three. So it would be length minus one. And, but we want to multiply it by the width. So this should be the color, which we can try to pass here as property. In fact, since we have inheritance, we can just put it here. So here you see the color is nicely interpolated depending on the position of the cursor. So things are colorful, edges are smooth. So it's now we're going to interpolate paths. So everything is going to be quite uh, delightful. 
Now, before we interpolate the paths, let's maybe, so here we have a complaint. Oh, that's an interesting one. So here, potentially, it can return null, but we're going to assume it never returns null. And actually, before we move forward, here, let's look at our uh, touch handler, because here we don't remember the position of the finger. We don't do anything fancy. So, and we also, if I touch anywhere on the graph, I will move the cursor, right? So we want to do two things. We want to remember the position. So this is where we're going to create an offset X value. And this is where you see, I wanted to do a separate hook so we can keep these private values private. And then we want to activate the gesture only if we are uh, touching the cursor. So I'm going to create another value called is gesture active. And the default is going to be false. Now, let's try to first remember the position. So when we um, start the gesture, we're going to set offset well, copilot common. Uh, offset dot current is going to be the x dot value, so x dot current. And since we want the delta with the active gesture, we're going to remove the current position of the finger. So that when we add to offset, we only have the delta uh, from when we started. So we remove pointer dot x and here x dot current is pointer dot x plus offset x dot current. And now we should remember the position. So now if I move, I put my finger on the complete left side, you see I remembered where I was. This is perfect. And the last thing we can do is that when I end the gesture, we're going to add a nice decay. So it's very smooth. Again, you're not talking about having smooth edges, nice colors, nice interpolation. We're going to add nice decay. So everything is like smooth and relaxing. So when we end the gesture, we're going to do a run decay on the X value. We, what's the config? We need to pass some velocity. So we're going to take the velocity X from the gesture. And one thing I want to do is to clamp, of course, the values. So we're going to add a clamp from zero to with. And we want also to clamp here, I think, from zero to with. Right? I think it makes sense. So you see, now I have some, depending on how fast I move my finger, I have some nice momentum onto the cursor. Isn't that cool? So now let's make if the gesture is active. So meaning I should only activate the gesture if I touch within the area of the cursor. And so first I, so let's see. So I'm going to check if my this, my, the position of the cursor is within the X and Y value. So I'm going to need the Y value, which is a ski read only value. And so we're going to pass it here as parameter. So now we want to calculate the distance between x, y, and the pointer. So the only thing we need to do, so what we would write is to do, we would do something so distance between, so the vector x, y, so x dot current, y dot current, and the, point, the pointer is less than, let's say, I don't know, 50. Then we know the gesture is active. So we can do gesture is active true. So current equals true. Here we only update if the gesture is active. So if is gesture active is true. And same here. And also we can set no matter what is gesture active current to false. So 
this is not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work, it's because if you go here, I translated the path to the translate Y value. So the actual position, the X and Y position is also translated by translated Y. So here, I simply need, I think, to adjust for translate Y here. And this should work nicely. And it does. So here I'm moving my, you cannot see my finger, but I'm moving it around. I cannot move the cursor. And here, boom, put nicely my finger onto the cursor. And it moves nicely. So I think we're done with the gesture. So again, the, I wanted to make it into a separate file so that, you know, all this logic stays uh, private. And now I think what would be nice would be to update the value of the label. So we need to pass Y as property. And so I can do maybe, let's, be, let's write it like this. And so here we're gonna need some state after because here we only select one graph, but we're gonna change graphs after. Um, so we need to interpolate, so here simply the Y value. So this is where we do the invert scaling. So we scale from values to X and Y coordinates. And now we have a Y coordinate and we need to scale to a value which is, so between uh, max price and min, min price. So this becomes a use derived value depending on the y dot current. And oops, what's, I can add, yeah, okay. The y dependency. Now let's have a look and you see here the value update nicely. Now let's do the last part. We're gonna nicely transition from one graph to another. Here, you see I have many graphs and I only select the first one every time, but we want to transition nicely from one to the other. So we're gonna need two new values. The first one is a transition animation value, so to go from one to the other, and I'm gonna call it transition. So it's gonna go from zero to one, and then I need some state. So I'm gonna use value, and the state is the index, I'm gonna call it current of the graph. And then the next, the index, so next, so the where we're gonna transition next. Now, okay, so let's select these values. So this becomes state.current.current. .current. That's poor naming maybe on my part. So this becomes, pass becomes an animated, a derived value, so use derived value, because now it depends on this state value. Uh, so the dependency state, and here I would do dot path. Up, something like this. Now here this becomes path dot current. That's all right. So it looks good, and we're going to pass these two new values to the selection component. So we have transition equals transition and state equals state. So we can add, oops, these properties here to the component. So I have state and transition. Now when we press here the, so we do on press, we are going to need to do a couple of things. So we're going to rewrite the state. So the state dot current. So current is state dot current dot next. And the next is simply the index where we go to. And then, so that's good. And then we set the transition to zero and animate it. So we do a run, run timing to one duration, I don't know, 
long one so it's really nice i don't know uh, some easing in out cubic um i think here it's in out so let's have a look so now if i press the button you see the graphs are changing nicely but what i want to do uh, so let's do the first thing is that we're going to move here this uh, rounded rack and so i'm going to add a transform here so again a derived value transform use derived value so something so it's going to be a transform depending on the transition and the state also i guess uh, some weird things have been imported. Let's see, I'll check later. So we're going to do a translate X and we're going to look at transition.current and we go from zero to... No, actually, we go to where we were, so state.current.current <laughs> and state.current.next. But of course, these are just indices. We want points. So we need to multiply by button width and here as well. And yeah, I knew something weird was imported. So now you see the button moves nicely. And so the last step is to interpolate using React Native Skia the paths. Very easy. So you see here I have my paths. So we have the current one. So this would be the start. We have the end, which would be dot next. And we do, and we return end dot interpolate. We pass the start and the T value, which is transition dot current. Let me update the dependencies. So you see I have the path here. I can move the cursor around nicely and I can transition super nicely, super smooth uh, between one to the other. And this is really when I mentioned delightful user experiences before, what it's all about. So some nice color interpolation, some smooth edges, some nice interpolations between a state to the other. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this example. We looked at the fundamental recipes to build great graph user interactions in React Native. We looked at how to go nicely from straight lines, data points to nice cubic Bezier curves and how to find the Y value given the X coordinate of the finger. And finally, we looked at nicely interpolating uh, from one path to the other. Using React Native Skia, these things can be done in a really fast manner and I am excited to show you more of these great recipes done with React Native Skia. So I am looking forward to talk to you soon and until next time, happy hacking.